as I set down these notes on paper, I'm obsessed by the thought that I may be the last living man on earth. I have been hiding in this empty house near Grover's Mill, a small island of daylight cut off by the black smoke from the rest of the world. All that happened before the arrival of these monstrous creatures in the world now seems part of another life, a life that has no continuity with the present. Heard of existence of the lonely derelict who pencils these words on the back of some astronomical notes bearing the signature of Richard Pearson. I look down at my blackened hands, my torn shoes, my tattered clothes, and I try to connect with, with a professor who lives in Princeton, and who on the night of October 30, glimpse through his telescope an orange splash of light on a distant planet. My wife, my colleagues, my students, my books, my observatory, my, my world. Where are they? Do they ever exist? Am I Richard Pearson? What day is it? Do days exist without calendars? Does time pass when there are no human hands left to wind the clocks? In writing down my daily life, I tell myself I shall preserve human history between the dark covers of this little book that was meant to record the movements of the stars. But to write, I must live. And to live, I must eat. I find moldy bread in the kitchen, and an orange not too spoiled to swallow. I keep watch at the window. From time to time, I catch sight of a Martian above the black smoke. The smoke still holds the house in its black coil. But at length, there is a hissing sound. Suddenly, I see a Martian mounted on his machine, spraying the air with a jet of steam as if to dissipate the smoke. I watch in a corner as huge metal legs nearly brush against the house. Exhausted by the terror, I fall asleep. It's morning. Morning. The sun streams in the window. The black cloud of gas has lifted, and the scorched meadows to the north look as though a black snowstorm has passed over them. I venture from the house. I make my way to the road, no traffic. Here and there, a wrecked car, baggage overturned, a blackened skeleton. I push on north. For some reason, I feel safer trailing these monsters than running away from them. And I keep a careful watch. I have seen the Martians feed. Should one of their machines appear over the top of the trees, I am ready to fling myself flat on the earth. I come to a chestnut tree. October chestnuts are ripe. Fill my pockets. I keep alive. I must keep alive. Two days I wander in a vague northerly direction through a desolate world. I finally notice a living creature, a small red squirrel in a beech tree. I stare at him and wonder. He stares back at me, and I believe at that moment. The animal and I share the same emotion. The joy of finding another living being. I push on north, find dead cows in a brackish field. Beyond the charred ruins of a dairy, the silo remains standing guard over the wasteland like a lighthouse deserted by the sea. 
stride the silo, purchase a weathercock. The arrow points north. Next day, I came to a city, vaguely familiar in its contours, yet its buildings strangely dwarfed and leveled off, as if a giant hand sliced off its highest towers with a capricious sweep of his hand. I reached the outskirts. I found Newark, undemolished, but humbled by some whim of the advancing Martians. Presently, with an odd feeling of being watched, I saw, I caught sight of something crouching in a doorway. I made a step towards it, and it rose up and became a man. A man with a large knife. Stop. Where did you come from? I, I come from many places. <laughs> a long time ago from Princeton. Princeton, huh? That's near Grover's Mill. Yes. <laughs> Grover's Mill. <laughs> There's no food there. This is my country. All this and the town down to the river. There's only food for one. Which way are you going? I... I don't know. I guess I'm looking for... people. What was that? Did you hear something just then? Only a bird. A live bird! You get to know that birds have shadows these days. Say, we're in the open here. Let's crawl into this doorway and talk. <laughs> Have you seen any Martians? Nah. They've gone over to New York. At night, the sky is alive with their lights. Just as if people were still living in it. By daylight, you can't see them. Five days ago, a couple of them carried something big across the flats from the airport. I believe they're learning to fly. Fly? Yeah, fly. Then it's all over for humanity. Stranger, there's still you and I. The two of us left. They've got themselves in solid. They wrecked the greatest country in the world. <laughs> Those green stars, they're probably falling somewhere every night. They've only lost one machine. There isn't anything to do. We're done. We're licked. <laughs> Where were you? You're, you're in a uniform. <laughs> yeah, what's left of it? I was in the militia. National Guard. That's good. Wasn't any war any more than there's war between men and ants. <laughs> and we're eatable ants. I found that out. What will they do with us? I thought it all out. Right now, we're caught as we're wanted. The Martian only has to go a few miles to get a crowd on the run. But they won't keep doing that. They'll begin catching us systematically. Keeping the best and storing us in cages and things. They haven't begun on us yet. Not begun. Not begun. All that's happened so far is because we don't have sense enough to keep quiet. Bothering them with guns and such stuff, and losing our heads and rushing off into crowds. Now instead of our rushing around blind, we've got to fix ourselves up. Fix ourselves up according to the ways things are now. Cities, nation, civilization, progress, done. But if that's so, what is there to live for? <laughs> well, there won't be any more concerts for a million years or so. And no nice little dinners at restaurants. If it's amusement you're after, I guess the game's up. <laughs> <laughs> and what is there left? Life. That's what. I want to live. Yeah, and so do you. We're not going to be exterminated. And I don't mean to be caught either and tamed and fattened and bred like an ox. What are you going to do? I'm going on. Right under their feet. I got a plan. We men as men are finished. We don't know enough. We got to learn plenty before we've got a chance. And we've got to live and keep free while we learn, see? I've thought it all out, see? <laughs> Tell me the rest. Well. It isn't all of us that were made for wild beasts, and that's what it's got to be. That's why I watched you. All these little office workers that used to live in these houses, they'd be no good. They haven't any stuff to them. They just used to run off to work, 
I've seen hundreds of them running wild to catch their commuter train in the morning for fear they'd get canned if they didn't. Running back at night afraid they won't be in time for dinner. Lives insured and a little invested in case of accidents. And on Sundays, worried about the hereafter. The Martians will be a godsend for those guys. Nice roomy cages, good food, careful breathing, no worries. After a week or so chasing about the fields on empty stomachs, they'll come and be glad to be caught. You've thought it all out, haven't you? <laughs> you bet I have. And that isn't all. These Martians will make pets of some of them. Train them to do tricks. Who knows? Get sentimental over the pet boy who grew up and had to be killed. And some, maybe, they'll train to hunt us. No, that's impossible. No human being. Yes, they will. There's men who will do it gladly. If one of them ever comes after me, why... Uh. In the meantime, you and I, and others like us, where are they to live when the Martians own the Earth? I've got it all figured out. We'll live underground. I've been thinking about the sewers. Under New York are miles and miles of them. The main ones are big enough for anybody. Then there's cellars, vaults, underground storerooms, railway tunnels, subways. You begin to see, eh? <laughs> we'll get a bunch of strong men together. No weak ones. That rubbish, out. <laughs> and you meant me to go? Well, I gave you a chance, didn't I? We won't quarrel about that. Go on. And we've got to make safe places for us to stay in, see? And get all the books we can. Science books! That's where men like you come in, see? We'll raid the museums. We'll even spy on the Martians. It may not be so much to have to learn before. Just imagine this. Four or five of their own fighting machines suddenly start off. Heat rays right and left and not a Martian in them. Not a Martian in them, but men. Men who have learned the way how. It may even be our time. Gee, imagine having one of them lovely things with its heat ray wide and free. We turn it on Martians. We turn it on men. We bring everybody down to their knees. That's your plan. You and me and a few more of us. We own the world. I see. Say, what's the matter? Where are you going? <laughs> Not to <laughs> your world. Not to your world. Goodbye, stranger. <laughs> <laughs>